Um, welcome everyone. It's good to see you all. Thanks very much for joining today. Um, I'm pleased we're still able to do report out in a virtual format and I appreciate the work of the KPO to enable us to do that. I think we are recording this so we can feature this on YouTube and make sure colleagues who aren't able to join us at this time can still see it. We've got some good uh, sessions today reporting out. So without further ado, I'd like to hand over to you, Christina, to talk us through um, the patient experience complaints Kaizen event 60 day report out. Christina and team. Sorry. Thanks, Julian. Um, so just to recap for those of you who might be joining us for the first time, we held a Kaizen event on the 8th of September that was focused on um, complaints, the complaints process. And we decided as part of that to focus on the process within the CSUs and to address two particular areas. One was to improve the timeliness of complaints and how quickly CSUs um, processed that piece of work. And the second area of focus was to improve the quality of a complaint response. And we all undertook to um, test various different initiatives that would achieve those aims. Um, next slide, please. We've worked with four CSUs to do that, TRS, AMS, um, ESM and Children's, all who are here today to represent themselves and we'll talk about the work that they've individually done. Next slide please. We've got a brilliant target progress report to report out today. I'm absolutely delighted to say that our figures are starting to show some improvement. It's really small on this slide, isn't it? But actually, um, if I talk you through it, we've got a shift in lead time for the two CSUs that we were able to measure. Um, so what this talks about is the amount of time it's taken for a complaint to be processed within the CSU. We've only looked at the new complaints, the new complaints that have been received since this um, process began. But for those complaints for children's, they've reduced down their time from um, 1,464 days to 1,188 days, which is absolutely brilliant and an improvement of 19%. And for um, ESM, they've improved their time from 1,248, um, sorry, hours, not days, to um, 888 hours, an improvement of 29%. So that's just absolutely brilliant. So delighted to be able to report that out. And just to uh, reinforce that the two CSUs we can't report out against is not because they haven't made improvements, but because we haven't got the data to be able to analyse for them as yet. Um, the other really good piece of good news is our um, work in progress. So one thing I was really conscious of is that it's really hard to demonstrate some of the improvements through the high level um, data. But if we actually look at the work that is going on within those CSUs to reduce down um, the backlog of complaints that they had prior to the 1st of September, there's been some really good work achieved. So children have um, managed to close down all 14 of the complaints that they had open on the 1st of September. Um, AMS have achieved just over half, 22 out of 40, ESM 30 out of 52 and TRS 13 out of 17. So the overall progress on all in all CSUs has been amazing. Um, so really good to see that this work is taking shape and is really starting to show um, impact. Next slide please Natasha. Uh, in terms of our newspaper, again, delighted to be able to say good progress being made against all the actions that we committed to deliver. Um, we continue to have our weekly accountability meetings, which really helps us focus on these actions and um, drive them. And those conversations are, ha are happening regularly and are really helping us achieve outcomes. Um, next slide, please. Uh, some of the other really good news stories to tell you um, are that you'll you'll be aware that we have introduced a new complaint response time framework which challenges our CSUs to complete some of their 
um, less complex complaints within 20 days. Now, this is a real shift for us as an organisation and, and a real challenge to think about how we do that in the context of a whole heap of complaints sitting in, um, in many of our CSUs to, to manage. But actually, this month we had the first example of one of our CSUs completing that task, not only within 20 days, but actually in 13 days. So well done to TRS for demonstrating that it is possible to do this. Because um, I, I know lots of our CSUs felt, uh, felt that that was definitely a challenge, but here we have proved that it can be done. So that's amazing. The complaints team have really taken a look at the feedback that they've been receiving as well. So one of the, the common feedback themes from um, our colleagues has been that complaints weren't always being received by them within three working days as we committed to do. And actually, if you're looking at a process that takes place uh, and is supposed to be completed within 20, 40, 60 days, those wasted days at the beginning of that process are, are massively important in terms of achieving that deadline. So um, we did look at our own personal defects, currently running at 4%. So in the last month, um, we failed to deliver two complaints in that time. And clearly that's something we're, we'll continue to monitor and work on going forward. But important to acknowledge, I think, our responsibility as part of this. Um, we've, we've also been reviewing our cover arrangements. The CSUs have been inviting us to their complaints huddles. That's been proved proving to be incredibly helpful to reduce down email traffic and to get slicker and become more lean uh, between us all. We are introducing um, coaching classes as promised for our CSUs to help improve uh, complaint response quality. They're in the diaries for November. And we've also done um, a big piece of work this last month looking at our quality assurance process, reviewing the guidance, introducing a forum into the work of the trust so that QAs come together to learn how to become more consistent um, in the work that they do and to also offer support to those QAs who are new to the process um, and an area which we haven't really considered as much as we should have done in the past. Um, I'm going to hand you over to our CSU colleagues now to tell you a little bit more about their brilliant work. Um, so next slide please. Hi, I'm Julie Lofthouse, Matron for AMS. Um, well, I'll just give you an update on our challenges. So what, one of the challenges we faced was around clinician engagement in providing a response, and that was mainly around their capacity to undertake that. Um, we have seen an improvement in that, and we've been getting some really good responses and feedback from the clinicians. We've had support from John Adams, um, in that process and we've also got a, a governance lead for um, in the within AMS who's been really supportive of that process so we have seen an improvement there. We've also had some recent challenges with staff absence um, in staff who support us in our complaints team. We've worked around that, we've got a band six supporting us on a secondment, we're also going to get some task mask the admin support as well and we've got a deputy hon in place now um, which has really helped to support the internal QA process. So we're continuing to do a brief timeline and overview of the patient journey when we allocate the complaints out. We're sharing those complaints with the um, clinicians which is helpful. We're providing specialty teams monthly data on complaints and targets We've got our escalation process in place. The complaints team are attending that now. We've set our internal time scales um, and we are getting support from the complaints team and patient experience, which has been really helpful. And all of that is helping us to um, respond to our complainants in a, in a more timely way. Um, we've got better ownership and engagement with the complaints process and we're working towards reducing a, a bottleneck at the QA status internally and although we may not have um, closed any of the complaints that we've had since September we have we have realized and recognized that we did um, 10 internal QAs in the last week alone which was a, a huge achievement and our oldest open complaint now is from July 
2020, whereas when we started the process, it was March 2020. So we've we have come a long way, and we, we recognise we've got quite a bit to go, but we're on the right path. Next slide, please. Hi, um, my name's Celia McKenzie. I'm the head of nursing at Leeds Children's Hospital. Uh, sorry, I don't have a camera today, so you're not able to see me. But um, where are we now, 60 days on? Well, when I um, did this slide, we had five open complaints, none of which were exceeding the agreed response time. But as of lunchtime today, we just have three. Um, We've made massive improvements, as you've already heard, none of our complaints that were open when we started this process in September are open anymore um, and they have all been um, closed and sent off. Um, how have we done that? What have, he, have we done? Well, we've improved our medical engagement. We've got a dedicated um, lead and that's our deputy CD. Um, and uh, we've got much better processes in place now so that uh, along with myself, Suzanne Abrahams, the general manager, we take joint responsibility for complaints and um, look at the complaints. And if they're particularly nursing and, and medical, then they'll come to me. And if they're particularly service business manager relating to appointments or processes, then they'll go to um, her for QA. So we're sharing that QA responsibility. It's not all with one person. And we've also got um, good plans for covering for annual leave. Um, we've embedded the weekly huddle and following on from our weekly huddle, we now have a weekly teams meet with the complaints team and um, it's an opportunity for a two way conversation. They can feed back to us where our complaints are in the QA process um, and let us know of any that might not quite have come to us yet and are in the pipeline. Um, so that that meeting's working really well. And as Christina said, it stopped all the email traffic and questions about where are we up to. Uh, we've also introduced and added a new column to our complaints board uh, call to the complainant. So now we're making sure that every complaint we receive, we call the complainant and um, just confirm that with them that we've received that complaint so they know that we've got it and um, just advising them what we're going to do now but also checking with them that if the questions that have been pulled out are appropriate is there anything else they want that's worked really well and um, we've been able to get some different information when we've called the complainant and hopefully we'll start to see that that may prevent um, reopened complaints because we all have answered appropriately everything that that they've required wanted from us. Um, we haven't quite started it yet, but we will be adding complaints onto the agenda for the tri meetings so that each specialty has a tri meeting with the matron, the service manager and the lead clinician and um, complaints will go onto that agenda so that um, we've got that record that they're challenging each other as well and we can challenge them too. Um, we're also supporting the QA process. When we heard first that there would be different QAs for different complaints, not one QA person for it, for each CSU, it was, we did, all, I think we all wondered what, how that would work um, in children's. We found that really uh, works really well. And what we've we've been doing is where um, we think that the the to in and fro in from a QA perspective might happen. Um, for instance, if uh, we're asked to explain some medical terminology, we've been adding a comment to the to the complaint response that we're sending forward for QA to say no need to um, uh, explain this. The parents fully understand. So that prevents a bit of to in and fro in at the, in the QA process. That's worked really well. Um, and so the impact of that is we've got much better, much more improved to patient engagement and experience. Our relationship with the complaints team is much better. And it's also improved staff morale because it was really depressing when you walked past that board every day and you saw 15 complaints, some of which were over 100 days. And to see it now, um, it doesn't see it seem like it's a big mountain to climb. Next slide, please. Hello, my name's Bev Brown and I'm Head of Nursing for Emergency and Specialty Medicine. And, and hello, my name is Robin Darby, Deputy Head of Nursing for Emergency and Specialty Medicine. So our progress so far is that our standard work form with roles and responsibilities has been shared with the team and well received. 
We've got really good engagement from our consultant colleagues with over 80 of those being actively involved in our complaints writing. Our weekly complaints meeting, um, we're constructing a standard agenda items um, and with, on the agenda there will be celebrating success on achieving our targets of 20, 40 and 60 days and also patient experience have started to come to our weekly meeting um, and working in collaboration with us. Uh, this, we are looking at our defect measures. Uh, we're starting to look at two measures for our defects, which was one around our internal QA process uh, and how long it takes us to um, internally QA. Uh, and then our second defect measure is around our external QA, how many, um, how many complaints come back to us once they've gone to execs for sign off. Uh, and uh, we are also doing a um, sharing our lessons learned newsletter, which will go out to the CSU monthly. So before the Kaizen event, there was a, a myth that complaints team were the only people that could con contact the complainant. So we committed within our CSU to, for single complaints only initially, um, for the matron to call the complainant, very similar to Celia about, to understand what the complainant's real issues were and if everything that we thought they needed was actually what they did need. And that's worked really well. It's worked well because the complainant feels more listened to, because the matrons are calling them and having that conversation um, and giving that verbal assurance. Um, and it also means that when we're sending responses, it's actually covering what the complainant wants responding to. And then next, um, we we wanted to focus on the coaching for our complaint writers, for our authors. And so what we agreed to do was, if we received a complaint through internal QA that we felt needed some work doing, we actually sit with the person who's written the complaint response to go through it with them. That not only saves time in that you've not got a complaint going backwards and forwards within the team, but it's also a really good learning tool for that person who's authored the complaint so they can sit with someone to understand how it might be better worded or better formatted. In addition to that, the complaints team have agreed to do some of this one-to-one -one coaching as well. And we've had a, a big uptake on that in the CSU, a lot bigger than I thought we would have. And we've forwarded names to the complaints team for them to provide some one-to-one -one coaching with our teams. Next slide, please. So I'm going to do the TRS update because unfortunately Donna has had to send her apologies today. She's been called to an urgent meeting um, and her deputies are away. Um, but I am able to tell you that she, um, similar to Bev's description, has been really focusing on um, delivering some internal coaching to support her to receive responses that are um, better quality that she feels um, are then easier to sign off um, as a head of nursing with less work required. So she is currently coaching um, a CSU business manager to support her in that. You've heard already about the great work that's been done in the team to reduce their backlog and to um, achieve the delivery of a complaint within 20 days. So really excited to be able to share that with them um, earlier this week. The, um, the CSU also have um, introduced uh, a much clearer production board um, reflecting the 20, 40, 60 day framework, continue to deliver weekly huddles um, and are additionally taking on some of the work that you've heard about in other CSUs today um, and taking the initiative to ring complainants at the onset of investigations to really get that clarity. Um, about what it is complainants want delivering to make sure that actually those responses go out um, containing the information that people are seeking and provide the um, assurance and support that our complainants are uh, requiring. Um, next slide, please. So just finally from us today, we um, continue going forward to commit to our weekly accountability meetings. We will meet again. Um, prior to day 90, um, as we did prior to this meeting today, 
Um, those opportunities are really good for us to get together and share our learning and we are learning from each other the whole time about how to improve this process. Um, and as you've heard from Robin and Bev today, we're also um, really trying to focus on what data can be captured at CSU level to demonstrate improvements that are happening that might not be able to spot when you're looking at the wider picture data. Um, so it's really important to try and pick, pick up on those really um, uh, individual steps that are taking place within CSUs that are different um, and for us to be able to identify the impact of those so that we can share them with others going forward. Um, so that's the end of that report out for today for our complaints um, 60 days and we look forward to seeing you again in 90 days. That's great, fantastic, really, really encouraging Christina and thank you to Julie, Celia, Beth, Robin and uh, in her absence uh, Donna, uh, really, really good. Uh, what we'll do is pick up any questions and observations right at the end as usual, but just to say I'm really pleased to see the progress following the session we had in Gledhow when we embarked on this uh, and uh, it's great to, to see the level of commitment and also the way that the teams are working together. So well done. So next up, we've got using Trello in our daily work and uh, looking forward to hearing about this. So Julie, over to you. Hi, uh, I think I'm Julie today. Um, oh, I'm, hiya. Hiya, I'm Calvin Farrow, I'm a medical workforce manager. Uh, for those that don't know the medical workforce team, uh, we're a HR function that support our medical workforce. So we're a large team of 25 and we've got a few of the team on the call today who are going to join in this uh, short presentation. We really wanted to just show you how we've used the Leeds Improvement Method and technology to change our way of working during COVID and remove some wasteful email traffic and streamline some processes just to keep to our time skills and deadlines. The next slide, please. Just, just a quick bit about our team purpose and what we do. So we're um, accountable for the safe deployment and management of junior doctors uh, seven days a week. So if the doctor rings in sick or he can't attend, he or she can't attend shift, um, we'll assist the CSUs in plugging that gap um, all whilst ensuring that all contract rules are followed, which basically ensures that LTHT doesn't have a doctor turning to a shift who has worked too many hours or hasn't had adequate rest or doesn't have the right employment checks. And um, we're really heavily involved in junior doctors rotations. Um, I think we have rotations nearly every month now with over a thousand junior doctors at LTHT. So it's a really lot of information to keep coordinated and keep on top of. And um, once we receive doctors names for a rotation, we assist CSUs in getting those doctors placed onto rotors, ensuring they have a work schedule and a live rota. And we have to do this and abide by um, contract deadline timescales. And it's also really important because it ensures the doctor starts on the right salary. So we do a lot of work um, with the CSUs designing those rotors and again ensuring that rotor change procedures are followed because again lots of contractual rules and if we don't adhere to them we can be fined. So as well as all that we also um, work with senior medical and dental staff in their job planning and appraisal and revalidation. So that's a bit about our purpose in a nutshell. I'm going to pass over to Sarah now, who's going to tell you a bit more about how we've moved to a blended working arrangement. And next slide, please. Hi, I'm Sarah. I'm an assistant workforce manager. Um, so when COVID hit, we chose a blended working arrangement where we have some staff still that need to remain in the office and other staff can work from home and we do it on a rotor basis. Um, our service starts at 8 a.m. every day and it finishes at 6.30 p.m. Monday to Friday. We provide weekend cover as well as bank holiday cover, 9 till 5. Some of the issues that became apparent were when we, were work, when we used to work in the office all the time, the rot we had rotation sheets. Um, these rotation sheets helped all the teams keep a track of where we are and what we were doing with each rotation. And if anybody was off or we needed to know some information, they were easily available on desks. Um, but obviously this is not possible when COVID hit and people were isolating and working from home. Um, so we wanted some solutions. We'd always had production board meetings every day and they, these just changed to a Teams meeting every day, uh, which is an opportunity to catch up and see who's doing what and who needs support. Um, we, we also 
use them to see who needs uh, help and if anybody can help anybody else. Um, and we share big pieces of work. Um, we've been toying with using Trello for quite some time, even before COVID, and some of our tech savvy team members had put together some boards, but not everybody had really had time to utilise them properly. But when COVID hit, we were in the middle of April rotations, which starts quite some time before, and we'd nearly done all that work um, to meet all the deadlines and do all the background work. And so when COVID hit, we had to do undo all that work and start completely from scratch and change roughly 70% of all the rotors into some sort of hybrid and COVID rotors. And obviously this workload wasn't planned and it was enormous stress on our teams. And this is where Trello comes into its own. We created different boards for each of the teams and under each of the teams you can control and, and do these checklists for Trello. So Adam's going to demonstrate our Trello board. We're using a dummy board today because we have lots of personal information on there about doctor's sickness and absence. So I'll hand over to Adam. Thanks, Sarah. Um, am I OK to actually share my screen to be able to give a bit of a demonstration for Trello? Go, yeah, go for it, Adam. Thank you. I hope you can all see this. So essentially, Trello has become something that we use in our day to day running of our workload. And it's something that we all have access to in order to be able to check up on each team as well. And everyone can see where we're all at. And it keeps everything um, nice and structured and in one place for us, because I think sometimes when you have lots of different emails, lots of different bits of paper, everything can kind of get lost and you never know where you are with certain things. So I'll just run through the different aspects that we use Trello for. Um, but obviously we can utilise them if you wanted to take them into your own teams in so many different ways. But I think the principles would stay the same. So we use these for mainly for our rotation boards and this really helps us keep track of where we're at with each rotation as we normally start a rotation about 16 weeks before the doctors actually come to us or rotate into their different specialities so it's a long piece of work that we need to be able to make sure that we're keeping on top of at, at each sort of given moment really and we use these by sort of just notating what areas what rotors are rotating we then put in checklists to make sure each point has been met so for example we need to make sure that we have that doctor's information we've confirmed those names with the department we've asked the doctors if they've got any specific requirements for days or um, annual leave purposes any study leave anything like that as well and it also has a function where we can drag and drop emails into it as well so that when we have anything coming into our inbox we can store that with that particular rotor and that bit of information as well. So everything is in one central place rather than having to keep trying to find things through your emails, which I assume with the amount of emails we all get would be quite impossible at times. Um, so that's really what we're using this for. And it's handy as well so that when other members of the team or other colleagues from different teams uh, dealing with queries regarding this, they can look on and see where we're at with their thing as well. So it really helps us be able to utilise cross cover, especially since we don't have many people in the office at the moment due to COVID. For those that are specifically in the office and answering the phones, it's handy for them to be able to deal with that query there and then rather than having to delay it or pass it on to someone else. Um, we also use this system to record any urgent gaps that we've got coming up. So a big function of our department is to ensure that the night shifts, long days, any type of on-call that we may have for the junior doctors are covered. And we just need to make sure we keep an accurate record of what we've got coming up, anything that we might need to prepare for, especially coming up to um, winter pressures and also in view of COVID and the fact that um, many people could be off at any one time. So we just need to make sure we keep notes of dates, times and what rotors as well. So again, that helps anybody that's cross covering to see where our urgent hot points are as well. And 
just to continue. We also use it for any sicknesses and that just helps us keep a track of where everybody is at one time. And it also helps us keep in communication with the departments to ensure that they're aware of who they're going to have in the workforce on any particular day. And that also gives us an idea of what gaps could potentially be upcoming. And on a separate function, we also record the COVID absences as that again lets us know who's off, who we need to look out for, um, what the current CSU pressures are, and it really gives us a good key indication of any potential um, concerns or worries the parents may have. And then more sort of daily or monthly things for us as deployment um, would be just to keep a track of our emails, our team emails, and making sure that they're getting done and to sort of raise any queries with that as well, as well as making sure, because we're in charge of making sure all the bank doctors get paid for their shifts. So it's about ensuring that the rotors have been locked down. We've chased for those timesheets to be approved. We have everyone on the correct clearance. Everyone's been rehired on the system and we're checking for any payroll queries that we need to look at for this month from the previous month as well. And as well as looking at any rehires or, or new hires to make sure that everyone is clear to work and all the bank details are with payroll to make sure that everyone has a smooth and good experience with LTHT. And then we just also use it for things like hot topics or anything to keep in mind. And I like to use this place to keep any useful hints or tips for anybody that is working on anything. For example, if you're creating templates, how to create those templates, our bank rates, our current variation orders that we have in order to pay at higher rates or at different rates for any reason. And we use this in our daily huddles and it really does help keep everything together and it's definitely made us a lot stronger and it's made our communication a lot clearer as well when we are discussing it as a team. Um, but yeah, so thank you so much for listening um, and I'll pass you back to Carmen. Thanks Adam. Um, hopefully we've just shown you quite quickly how we're able to sort of keep on top of our deadlines and targets and, and share information in a less wasteful way using the Trello boards. I think Adam touched on it, but it's been really helpful with a team that works shifts and has a blended working arrangement. I think an example I noticed um, the, the last weekend that the team member working the weekend had a, a lot of sickness, a lot of event, events happened over the weekend. And it meant on that Monday morning that the team, um, they didn't need to chase up go through emails it meant that they quickly knew what had happened so thank you for listening and if anyone has any questions or wants to contact us um, for any advice on setting them up please do fantastic thank you carmen and thanks very much sarah and adam that was great really really good it's really impressive to see how you're using that to help organize and manage all of those rotors i did notice adam we've got on your slide there was a Donald Trump rotor. We might need to rename that <laughs> soon. Don't Very good. Names, that wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> but no, really good, really impressive, uh, excellent. And and medical staffing is such an important part of the uh, the way we we organise and run the the trust and deliver care. So uh, it's, it's really good to see the work you've been doing. Thank you for sharing that. Um, let's move on. Um, we are sort of over over the time we planned, but I hope colleagues can just stay on a little bit um, because we've got important presentation. Uh, first of all, in terms of Lean for Leaders, a big congratulations to both of these colleagues. Marianne Taylor, Lean for Leader Certification, eMedicine's Lead Pharmacist, fantastic. Marianne, brilliant work. And Emma Wright, Lean for Leader Certification in Corporate Planning. Really, really well done, Emma. Great work. So uh, a big congratulations to both of you. Um, you'll have to sort of imagine I'm handing this over to you. I'm giving sort of a virtual presentation here uh, in terms of your certificates which I know um, you, you'll, I'm sure you'll get, but it's no mean feat, uh, Lean for Leaders, particularly given all the challenges we've got right now. So really well done to both of you. Thank you, Julian. Great, okay. Um, I 
don't know if either of you were planning to say anything. I'll just check. Or are you happy just to receive our congratulations? Uh, Julian, I, I'd just like to say something very quickly. Of course, I know we're running please. over time. Thank you. So um, it's Marianne here. I, I wanted to say that I, um, I have really enjoyed the sort of last uh, few modules of Lean for Leaders, which dealt with daily management and people link. It took me quite a while to get my head round, but I found it really rewarding. Um, yeah. And I just, just wanted to say a big thank you to the KPO team for their support through the programme and to say that I really look forward to continuing connecting with them in the future as we carry on with our improvement work in pharmacy. So thank you very much. That's great, Marianne. Um, I think we'd all agree with those comments and hopefully you'll maintain that relationship with the KPO team and continue to um, develop your skills and your build on what you've done through the programme. Um, Emma, anything you wanted to add? Hi, Julian. Um, yeah, I think I'd just echo Marianne's comments. Um, it's a journey that is quite difficult at times um, and whenever I came across things that I wasn't sure about the KPO were always really willing and helpful um, and it was not anything that they hadn't seen before and they gave me useful tips coaching and advice um, and I'm just looking forward to sharing that with other teams now so brilliant thank you. That's great thanks very much Emma well done and I, I guess just to add I think we're very fortunate to have uh, such a strong and supportive KPO team who are there to help all of us uh, as we go through our learning and um, feedback from both of you. Uh, so really well done. Now we're up to um, questions. I appreciate we are over time, but I'm very happy just to uh, allow a bit of time for any questions or comments on what you've heard so far. We've had some really, really good presentations. So I can see a hand up there from Anthony. I just want to say how pleased I am with the report backs, uh, report outs from the complaint uh, experience Kaizen uh, event work. Uh, particularly, what I want to draw attention to is the initiative which has been up a thought place at the beginning of this. And I think it's central, but why I'm so about it is that it promotes the trust value of being patient centred. I think that's yeah. really important. Yeah. The, the other one that I'm really pleased about is that the um, complaints are now in children's uh, medicine being presented to the TRI meeting. And I think that's really important as well because it provides a focus for improvement opportunities. Thanks very much, Tony. That's great to hear and it's good to see you. Uh, thank joining you. us um, and thanks very much for, for your feedback. Any thank other you. questions or comments? Yeah, there's some good stuff in the chat actually. I hope you can all see that, which comment on the, uh, the presentations that we've heard today. Um, so that's really great and I'm sure I can notice Jimmy's contributed. I'm sure Jimmy we can save those comments and share them with colleagues who might not have been able to join us today. Um, okay well in that case let's end uh, today's report out there. Just to say a massive thank you to all of you who have participated. It's been really excellent. I've really enjoyed it and during these tough times, it gives us a big boost actually to see all the really, really great work that's continuing um, and actually helps with the challenges that we're, we're facing. So please do join us at the next report out. That's an auspicious day, isn't it? Friday the 13th of November at 12.30. And I look forward to seeing you then. Thank you very much, everyone. End of report out.